talk about the story about Gilgamesh, but from the point of view of significant human experience. Now, what is significant human experience? And I mentioned a little bit of that in our last session. Because sometimes we forget, that's why I kind of bring it back. Like towards the end of our last session, I mentioned the word significant human experience. Any ideas? Um, does it mean like what in the story relates to everyone? Uh, yes, uh, what a story relates to. Significant human experience appears um, a lot in some of the literary interpretation books. So when I was in high school, for every literature that we read, uh, whether it's a fable, a fairy tale, or even the great works of Greek literature like Pandora or Medea, the teacher at the end always asked us to tell us about the significant human experience. And when I was uh, in the UK 10 to 12 years ago, I helped my half-sister finish her requirements uh, about her literature course in GCSE and also help her prepare her GCSE exam. And one of the questions there that you have to study is, what is a significant human experience? So it seems that this uh, terminology is kind of popular all over the world. So it wasn't just my, my teacher uh, trying to teach me, but also um, around the world. So significant human experience is essentially what's the life lesson? What can we learn from the whole story of Gilgamesh? And another term, if I'm going to interpret significant human experience, it's basically what is the life lesson? So maybe I could ask each one of you, what, what can we learn from this story that can help it's, us? It's, it's basically asking about an experience that is shared with, within all of humanity. So whether you are British or African or Asian, like all the people in the world experience this or talk about this. So what, what's a human experience, or what do you experience as a person? Well, in relation to guilt, there's friendship. Okay, thank you. Uh, I saw so your uh, message. Okay. And I just read the, your, the full sentence now. is A significant human experience is um, relates to the moral of the story. Yeah. So... Can you type that again it's about what you said about uh, one of the human experiences that we had in relation to the Gilgamesh story? Because I couldn't get the full word or sentence of what you said. Yes, friendship. So that's basically uh, the story talks a lot about friendship. And, and so what, what about the friendship of... Um, of Gilgamesh and Enkidu. I mean, what, what's, what, what's that all, all about? What can we learn from that? So, if I would say, a friend can change your life. And we meet somebody who we have a connection. And that connection would change your life. It changed the life of Gilgamesh, but it also changed the life of Enkidu. Now the very interesting thing is uh, Enkidu who started as animal-like was civilized and became more like uh, a proper rule, ruler. And Gilgamesh who started as beastly has an attitude of being an animal who just snatched um, somebody, uh, snatched a woman from, from a married man also became more humane 
when meeting the animal like a figure of Enkidu. So here is this two direction of friendship and they affect each other. So that's really one of the uh, things that you can learn is as a person in our life, our friends you know, is so crucial. It will make or break you. If you go out with people who are into drugs and try to be swayed by them, that will ruin your life. As I see from some of my friends when I was growing up, is they went somebody and tried to kind of, um, try to impress you know, this person who are into drugs and took drugs himself. And it basically ruined him. Right, I, I just saw it before my eyes and I said, I'm not going to go with those kind of people. So, your friends are important and that's basically a lesson that's hidden in this story. What else? What are um, other significant human experience? Um, when Enkiji dies, it's like... Um, it, it's not necessarily about like your own morality, but like the morality of everyone. So it's like, you know, while you're with these people in this life, you've got to live it up, you know, you've got to not take it for granted. Um, cause you know, what if you could die? Yes. So yeah. it's essentially never take your life for granted because you'll never know and Inkidu when he was in his deathbed he curses his creator he curses Shamahat he curses the trapper for bringing him to the city of Uruk and Inlil, Inlil remind, reminded him right? look why are you cursing me or cursing those people it gave you a life that you really enjoyed it gave you great human experience and so before he died, he kind of um, made an effort to thank Enlil, to thank the trapper, the hunter, the gatherer, and to thank Shamahat for bringing him these great experiences. So in a way, yes, live your life well. What can you share? Uh, what, uh, what human experience that um, is relatable in, in the story? death thank you right and so it's the attitude to death now thank you for bringing that up and is there anything else you'd like to see that how shall we see that you know i mean how did gilgamesh react to that how did Inkidu react to that and and how should we act to death you know based on the story you know what is the story telling us about that how should we relate to it Anyone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.